Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on gender roles and relationships, examining emotional labour. When sociologists look at the division of labour in the family, they often refer to the emotional labour performed. But what is emotional labour? Emotional labour is the work that is done to comfort and support the emotional needs of the immediate and often the extended family. Traditionally, this role fell upon women taking on the expressive role, and they were expected to provide support for the emotional well-being and stability of the family. This included looking after children's emotional needs, the emotional needs of their partner, and extended members of the family, particularly the elderly. Duncombe and Marsden suggested that the responsibility for emotional labour in the family often fell upon women. As males were focused on their role as a provider, women provided the emotional support to their children, relatives and their partner. However, as the need for dual earner families rose and women were increasingly engaged in employment, the role of emotional labour, as well as other domestic labour, remained with females. This left women with what was referred to as the triple shift – paid employment, domestic labour and the emotional labour of looking after the family. This is in part due to the traditional role of the female as being caring and nurturing, as outlined by Parsons' sex role theory. In his sex role theory, Parsons suggested that the division of domestic labour was based upon biological characteristics that the partners in a relationship were best suited to. As males were perceived to be physically stronger, their role was to provide for the family and ensure discipline of the children. Females, Parsons argued, were better suited to the caring and expressive role of looking after the family, and this included emotional support. It was thought that women were better suited to this work due to their role as mothers. This reinforced their position as a primary caregiver, and whilst Parsons based his ideas upon the traditional American family, his view has been heavily criticised for reinforcing traditional gender stereotypes of women and their role in the family. This organisation of the family has led to many critics. Ansley suggested that women absorbed the anger and frustration of males and that this had become an expectation of their role. They were there to be the takers of shit, as Ansley famously stated, in their duty to provide males with an outlet for their anger. Zaretsky also focused on the role of emotional labour on workers, highlighting the ideological function that the family performed for capitalism, refreshing and replenishing the worker so they were able to continue their work the next day. However, Duncombe and Marsden looked at the impact of providing emotional labour for women, finding that many women felt that their emotional needs were often neglected within the family, as they were too busy looking after everybody else's. However, with changes in the family, has emotional labour become more equal? And if so, how? Those who subscribe to the individualization thesis suggest that people are more attuned to their own emotional needs in contemporary society, and rather than searching for somebody to fix them through romantic love, actually look for validation of how they feel. Appreciating the feelings of one's partner is more important in contemporary society than financial support, particularly as women are increasingly financially independent. Beck suggested that changes in society had made relationships less stable and that as a result relationships had become more negotiated. People look to find partners that meet their emotional needs and as such the balance of emotional labour has become more equal. According to Hochschild, the need for emotional support has spread beyond the family in the 21st century, with the alienation and frustration caused by work not being soothed by the effects of family life. Conflicts between being there for the family and being able to vent frustrations about work have led to more people seeking emotional support from others outside of the family unit, friends, colleagues and mental health professionals. Another impact on the emotional labour in the family is the emergence of the new man, a media creation from the early 1990s that suggested that masculinity was changing in the face of wider social changes. This was particularly evident in the relationships between children and their fathers. Miller suggesting that males were taking a greater role in the lives of their children, particularly in the younger generations. However, critics have suggested that the new man was exaggerated and that the strains of paid employment and the pressures of hegemonic masculinity had led many men to revert to traditional gender stereotypes or towards more toxic forms of masculinity. 
The burden of emotional labor on women can be linked to the crisis of masculinity and toxic masculinity. Males are expected by females to be more emotionally available, yet often are unable to speak about their own emotions due to the way that they've been socialized. Beck suggested that males are adapting to meet the emotional needs of others, particularly their children. As a result of insecurity in their careers, Beck suggested that many males now allow themselves to be defined by their fatherhood, a permanent identity, rather than by their occupation, an often temporary one. As a result of increasing insecurity in relationships, males are having to adapt to providing emotional labor, but with two thirds of divorces being petitioned for by females, perhaps they are not doing so successfully. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on gender roles and relationships, focusing on emotional labor. Thanks for watching.